Okay, good afternoon. Dr. Jensen here. I'm going to look at a few common solubility questions for general chemistry. Um, start us off here. One of the best ways to look at some of these problems, you generally end up having to memorize things like the solubility rules. These are generally a set of rules given um, in your textbook. The ones that are the most important though, and can give us a variety of answers without really having to apply too much memorization are these ions here. Lithium, sodium, potassium, ammonium, nitrate, and acetate. If we know these ones in particular, these are always soluble. And so when we're faced with various kinds of solubility problems, if we know these, generally this will get you about 90% of the answers for any type of general chemistry problem where we're looking at solubility, because if we can identify these, then we can probably out weed out potential answers or at least narrow down our choices to a more reasonable, maybe 50-50 if we have to guess, okay? Um, so for example, one of the first kinds of problems that we may have is looking at particular just ions. Okay, um, there's a variety of ways that these problems get done. Is oftentimes we can word these as an individual problem of what is the outcome of this if I put it in water? What happens? Will, it, will the silver iodide dissolve or will it not? Um, what happens to copper phosphate when I put it in water? Will it dissolve or will it not? Other common ways that these are worded is given this group of ions, which one is gonna be, or how many are soluble, or how many of this group are gonna be insoluble. And so you have to look at them collectively as a, as a whole. So this is again where knowing our solubility rules is important. And so if we just look at if we know the ones that are always soluble, okay? So if the question is asking, well, how many are soluble? Okay, so at least one has to be included in your answer because at least the potassium is always soluble, okay? So this at least gives you something, right? Um, so at least you can't, you know, if the answer is like none, so obviously the answer is not none of these are, are, are insoluble. Um, or none of these are soluble. So in this case, the potassium, just from it being present in this molecule makes this one soluble, okay? It's gonna be soluble no matter what, okay? The halogens, like iodine, are not included in our uh, top group, but they are generally soluble, except with things like silver, mercury, and lead. So you'd say this is an insoluble product, okay? So that means it's, it's going to be a solid, right? Okay, so don't confuse my S's here. Then I'm saying this is soluble, right? Versus insoluble product. And so that means that this is a solid and soluble means it's going to be an aqueous, okay? Phosphates in general are insoluble. So their only exceptions are generally the, these, these ions at the top. Okay, so you end up with a soluble compound there. And the same thing with the carbonates. The carbonates were generally insoluble, except with the, the general group of ions at the top. Okay, so this is one kind of question where we have to deal with just determining solubility of a salt just from putting it in water. Okay, so once we move past that, okay, another, set of questions that we often come across are things like you're often given a reaction or a problem like this. Right? 
So we have uh, sodium hydroxide and iron three chloride. And we want to know what are, what are the products, okay? And what is the outcome of that mixing? And again, this is a solubility reaction. So we expect this to be what are called double replacement. So we're gonna, so the, the positive ions are going to swap partners. In this case, the other thing to keep in mind here too is the charge doesn't change on the iron. So what is the, the oxidation state on the iron here is plus three, right? So we would expect over here for the iron to remain as a plus three, okay? So, but it's going to swap and be paired with the hydroxide, okay? And then we're gonna get our sodium chloride. Okay, so that's swapping the, swapping the potential partners. Okay, so by them swapping with one another, you end up with the sodium chloride and the iron hydroxide. And then they remake the molecule that they're supposed to make on this side. And again, because the iron doesn't change its oxidation state, that gives you your hints as to how you, what you're gonna put together. You also have to balance this, this eventually at the end. We'll get to that in a minute, okay? But then we need to determine what happens when these molecules now form, okay? So sodium is part of our, one of our ions up here. So we know this one is always gonna be aqueous, okay? So the question is just what is, what happens with the hydroxide? Hydroxides are generally insoluble, and so iron is not one of those exceptions, okay? So we'd accept this, expect this to be a solid, all right? And then you would wanna balance this reaction, okay? Since there's three hydroxides, we're missing three over there. Um, this also makes for with the three chlorides. Okay, remember when we're balancing, we have to change the coefficients only. We cannot affect the subscripts of the reaction. So the molecules themselves can't be, can't be changed, but we can change how much of them we have. Okay, and so this essentially gives us our molecular equation, right? So the molecular equation Okay, so our molecular equation, so this is called the okay, the molecular equation. All right, so again, a lot of times problems start off with where we're just given the reactants of this and they wanna know what is the molecular equation for the combination of these two reactants, okay? Uh, another common, common question that is a follow on from this is coming up with what is called the total ionic equation. So anytime we have, we're having a total ionic equation, we, we're really, we're just separating anything that's aqueous into their ions. So the only things that don't get separated for a total ionic equation are gases, liquids, and solids, okay? So those don't get separated, okay? So if we're separating this, this molecular equation, Okay, so I didn't separate the iron hydroxide. Again, the solid remains together, but everything else has been separated into its ions. Now you can, of course, balance this as well. I generally don't uh, write this out in a full balanced uh, format because we're just really wanting to show kind of where the ions are separated and how they, uh, they, they do separate, okay? Uh, one of the other things that generally also falls from a total ionic equation are finding the things that are the spectator ions, okay? So your spectator ions are the ions that haven't changed in the reaction. Now, also, these ions up here at the top, because these are always soluble and these are solubility reactions, we would expect that these ions at the top here are always gonna be spectator ions if they are present. Okay, so the sodium, has not changed in this reaction. It was sodium ion over here, 
it's still sodium ion over there. We have a chloride ion and a chloride ion that have not changed. The hydroxide is not a hydroxide ion over here, it's a molecule. The iron is no longer an iron ion, it's in a molecule, so that it has changed. So identifying spectator ions may be another, another step in this, in this kind of problem. And then lastly, so this is called the And so this is called the total ionic equation, okay? Okay, with spectator ions. All right. Then lastly is our net ionic equation, where if we take out the spectator ions, what are we left with? Right. So removing out the spectator ions, we're left with just the iron and the hydroxide. Unlike your net income, after they take out the taxes, then we have your gross income. We have our taxes, we took that out, and we end left with our net income or net ionic equation, what is left over after we've removed the spectator ions. And again, this one here would be balanced, okay? So these four kinds of, of solubility problems are common uh, solubility problems. A lot of these are based on things like knowing your solubility rules. So if you don't have the solubility rules memorized, it can be problematic in, in solving some of these, okay? I don't know whether or not they're, they're not always given in many problems, but for the most part, these are generally things that you would have to be able to do for any of these problems. Now this, this kind of problem is complicated if things like the original two compounds are given only in name format. So, so if written sodium hydroxide and iron three chloride, it, allow, it is more difficult because it forces us to engage in some of our nomenclature and we have to build the molecule first and, and then write the equation, which again, makes it more difficult and it can be a more of a, a problematic uh, thing to try and get over. So that's why memorize, keeping up with our solubility rules is an important, or not just the solubility rules, but our nomenclature as well is an important step in this process as well. Okay. All right. So that is it for a practice problem for solubility. And I will come back in the next video with some uh, oxidation reduction.